Hello and welcome to the Box Score Breakdown Show presented by Hoopball. My name is Adrian Benjamins and I'm joined by Neil Rochelani. And this episode is brought to you by Hawaiian Isles Kona Coffee Company. Taste the Kona difference. Head over to HawaiianIsles.com or Amazon and get some delicious coffee from Hawaii. Neil, how are you doing? Uh, last day or night before the All-Star break, are you ready for the All-Star break? I am ready. I could definitely use some Hawaiian Isles Kona coffee. A little sluggish here. Just uh, limping here to the finish line of the All-Star break. Um, starting to get a little ill. So just, you know what? When your body just kind of like, you start to feel where you just want to pull your hoodie on and <laughs> whatever, lie on the couch. <laughs> anyway, that's how I'm feeling. Uh, I'm glad to hear that um, we talked pre-show that you're doing better. Your family's doing better. Um, did you get yeah, my man. Valentine's Day card? Adrian, I sent it through the internet. Oh, no, <laughs> I missed it. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. I, I, I sent you one, though, like mentally. Adrian, be my Valentine. I knew you would. Oh, I knew you'd show up you. and uh, be here tonight with me. You know, my wife got me nothing. So uh, <laughs> you're the only person that got me something. Thank you, Neil. You're welcome, man. Um, man, I, I uh, you know, we're getting over that cold, sickness, flu, whatever it was that hit us uh, the last week. So I feel like I'm just starting to get my energy back. But man, this All Star break is coming at the perfect time. I think we could use a little uh, R&R at this break. And you know, Neil, remember when. Uh, or, okay, remember back when you were in school and it was like the last week of school and you kind of already checked out and you're kind of just going through the motions. I feel like tonight may have been like that in the NBA, you know, like these guys know they're about to get a little break. I mean, some of these guys that aren't going to All-Star Weekend, what do they do? Do they like, do they go on vacation? Maybe they plan a little trip or something. So um, I'm sure a lot of these players have checked out and they uh, could use a little you know, this, like, I feel like this break is coming at the perfect time. I know I got a bunch of players that are, like, have minor injuries here and there. So I'm actually really glad that this All-Star break's here, man. Yeah, that's a good point. We forget that this, the NBA season for the players are a grind. You know, it's a long season, 82 games. And um, a lot of these players do get the week off and get to go on vacation and kind of take a break from basketball for a few days. So I'm sure they mentally start to human nature wise, you know, check out a little bit. We see that, I guess, maybe in tonight's games. Um, as we jump into them ultimately here, any any news though you got or anything else you want to talk about before the box scores? You know, I don't see any major news. I do want to talk about Anthony Davis, who I believe left the game tonight, but we could get into that when we look at that game or when we get in that box score, we could talk about Anthony Davis. But to me, that's like maybe the only major thing that's currently happening at the moment. Should we, shall we jump into it? I think it might I be see, your turn. I see one minor thing. I guess I'll just throw it what out it? there since uh, Markeith Morris going to join the Thunder. Oh, that's a good one. Actually, that's a good one. I wonder what if do you think have, about that? You know, he had low end usage, uh, low end value, I should say, in Washington. Um, never someone with a high upside, decent upside, uh, kind of a high floor in terms of like top 12 team or top 125, I should say. In Oklahoma City, I don't think he'll start. Um, I don't think he'll have fantasy value in 12 team leagues, but I guess given that they don't have a lot of great wings there, maybe. Um, He'll get some run. I'm, I'm not sure. I'm sure. I think he's more of a second unit guy. Do you have any thoughts? Yeah, I'm not excited about the move for him. I, for, I mean, I don't think he's worth picking up. And Neil, the worst part about it, I think this ruins Jeremy Grant, who I have really enjoyed having on a bunch of teams this year. Neil, I already dropped Jeremy Grant as soon as I heard that Markeith Morris was joining this team. I don't really think this move is about... Um, the value of Markeith Morris, as you said, likely going to come off the bench. They got Nerlens Noel. They got Grant. They got Steven Adams in that front court. Um, so, uh, you know, I'm not super excited for the move 
Um, they also have Patrick Patterson who started tonight. So they got a pretty loaded front court. Not excited for what this means for Markeith Morris. If anything, I'm more disappointed that it's going to ruin the value of guys like Jeremy Grant. And But Neil, from a reality standpoint, love the move, man. They This team, who I believe is third or fourth right now in the West, just got deeper. I really like this Oklahoma City team. Paul George is rolling right now um, at an MVP level. Russell Westbrook just went for like 11 triple doubles. Has just been insane. This team, uh, they're deep with Schroeder coming off the bench. And now they added Keith, uh, Steven Adams. This is a team that could do some damage in the playoffs. What do you think? I would not want to run into this team in the playoffs. Yeah, I'm curious to see what how they do in the playoffs because they are, um, they're two player dominant in terms of scoring. And I think when in a series you can kind of focus in on that a little bit better than on the regular season. But anyway, that's a good that's a good thought about Grant. I did not think that did not jump out at me right away. Um, I that's bold. If you already dropped him, I would hang on to him. Uh, but you, perhaps you're more prescient than me. Let's see how it you plays know, out. Go ahead. You know, so what happened is, is I had a guy in my IR spot that I needed to activate. And I think it was Seti Osman or Karis Levert. And in order to activate him, I had to drop someone. So the moment I found out, okay, Markeith Morris is joining this team. Look, I believe that they are going to give him minutes in like the low 20 minute range. And I think that is enough to really hurt Jeremy Grant. So I, I just made the speculative move so that I can activate a guy. So it's not like I just dropped Jeremy Grant for no reason. I did it as in I wanted to activate a guy, and he seemed like maybe my best drops with this news coming down. All right, man. Should we hop over to the games? Let's do it. <clears throat> uh, I forget if it's my turn or your turn. I think it is your turn. I think you're right. A start with Charlotte Orlando. Blowout here, 127.89. If I do the math right, that's 38 points. Difference should not happen when you're playing Orlando. Um, maybe Charlotte was checked out. 89 points tonight. A lot of their first unit guys did not really get to see a high minute count because of this. Um, Marvin Williams, very low line, 22 minutes, just five points tonight. It is a safe fantasy option there at the low end range tonight. Does not deliver. Batum, same thing. Very low end fantasy um, player, but pretty safe there. Zeller, good to see him back and playing 30 minutes. Um, kind of glad he got that run. 13 points, seven rebounds. Um, even put a couple steals up tonight. So I, I'm trusting him going forward. Jeremy Lamb, just 18 minutes. Kemba Walker, just 28 minutes. Their fantasy lines are very poor tonight. Kemba Walker. Kemba Walker, excuse me, also shot just four of 20 from the field. So the struggle there tonight, including 0 of 7 from three point land. Uh, Monk probably had the best night off the bench 24 minutes, 15 points, four rebounds, two assists on seven of 16 shooting, one of seven from the three point line. Um, Miles Bridges, just 22 minutes. Um, Kid Gilchrist, 14. Shelton Mack, 12. This is a very ugly game from the Charlotte side. Uh, like you said, maybe these guys mentally are just a little checked out uh, during their vacation early in Central Florida. Um, I don't know what to make about this game, except I'm just kind of throwing it away from a fantasy perspective. Any thoughts from you on uh, this side of the ledger? I am very encouraged by what I saw from Cody Zeller. And, uh, Neil, I don't know if you still have him in a league. I have been holding him in a couple of my deep leagues. And I think after the all-star break, man, I might lock this guy into my roster because, uh, you know, Biombo didn't play in this one. Maybe this is why Cody Zell Zeller got 30 minutes in a blowout. But I think he's pretty much locked up that starting center spot. And uh, I think he can have some late round value um, it, as the starting center on this team. So that's my biggest takeaway here. And, you know, if you have Kemba Walker and Batum and some of these other guys, Neil, as you said, I think they kind of just checked out here, you know, right. I mean, literally right before the all-star break, kind of that senioritis where you just kind of like not really there. So don't worry if you have a lot of these Charlotte Hornet guys I think they'll be just fine after the all-star break. 
All right, I'm going to look in on the Orlando side. You know, I'm going to start with Jonathan Isaac, Neil. I'm starting to love this guy. I'm starting to fall back in love with Jonathan Isaac, man. It's been a rough ride, but uh, it's looking a lot better. 16 points, a steal, a block, six rebounds. Very efficient, six of nine from the field, two with two from the line, two threes tonight. This is outstanding. I'm happy the All-Star break's coming up, too. Let this guy get some rest so that he can get shot out of a cannon for the uh, remaining part of the season. Love this. Nikola Vucevic, love this guy as well. A well-deserved All-Star nod for him. He's having a fantastic season. 17 points to go along with a steal, a block, four assists, 11 rebounds, one three, seven of 13 from the field, two of three from the line. Neil, DJ Augustine, man, we've really seen him fall off lately. I can't even remember the last time we looked at his box score and where he had an, an outstanding game. I feel like almost every time we look at his box score lately, it's real low-end line like we saw tonight. Eight points, seven assists, one block, two threes, three of five from the field. I think, you know, this is who he is, just a... Uh, a really, really low end point guard, but uh, you know, some people that's still useful for some people, depending on your uh, situation. Aaron Gordon didn't really have it going in this one, only shot four of 17 for 10 points, one steal, four assists, 11 rebounds, one three. I think he'll be just fine after the all star break. Fournier with a nice game, 12 points, two steals, six assists, one three on five of 12 shooting. He should be just fine. Don't trust anyone off of the bench. Uh, oh, you know what? I do trust someone off the bench. Terrence Ross. He is always good for some scoring, even in a low 20-minute role. He put up 21 points tonight, two assists, one rebound, three threes on eight of 15 shooting, two of three from the line. He's the one guy off the bench that I would trust or I would be streaming, especially if you need some points. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Magic? Um. Yeah, DJ Augustine. I guess that's the reason he, he uh, wasn't drafted in most leagues. It's just he just can't be consistent. He gets the minutes tonight with the blowout, fewer minutes, but generally he gets enough minutes, just not enough um, value there. And it's so interesting. I'm like you. I can fall in and out of love with players so easily. I would be loving Jonathan Isaac if I had old held him all season, and now he's doing this. Um, man. Never had the opportunity. Um, other players, Aaron Gordon, I, I thought he might have a bounce back year. Currently uh, sitting at 86 on a per game basis in eight cat leagues, not where I had hoped he would end up this year. Um, field goal percentage has just not been good. 417 tonight, 44% uh, on the year. So that's kind of one drag on his uh, fantasy value. And I don't think it's going to get much better. Uh, that's really it, Terrence Ross. Yeah, he's a he's a three point specialist, um, and shoots relatively efficiently uh, for a guy who bombs. But um, um, I'm still like too scared to pick him up. <laughs> that's all I'm gonna say. <laughs> all right, New York, Atlanta, New York, 106. Interesting win here for the Knicks, 106, 91 down in Atlanta. Team, a tale of uh, one team who I thought for sure was tanking in New York and Atlanta, perhaps not, as we've seen them get some nice wins here, but tonight it was the, the Knicks who win. Um, let's start off with uh, Dennis Smith Jr., 19 points, two rebounds, seven assists, a very efficient seven of 10 shooting. Did struggle from the line, though, just three of eight from the free throw line, two three-pointers, a steal. DeAndre Jordan, double-doubles with 10 points, 13 rebounds, four of four from the field, two of two from the line. Love to see that from your big man. One steal, three blocks. Uh, the lineup keeps gets uh, a little stranger tonight. We know Cantor is gone. Uh, Cornette starting 31 minutes, although that didn't really matter. 11 points, three rebounds, three of 16. Wow. Just a horrendous night shooting for him. Three three-pointers, four steals, a block. Kevin Knox not really getting it done this season either. Nine points, 10 rebounds, one assist on two of nine shooting. Uh, Damian Dotson, 21 minutes in the starting role. Not much fantasy value. Um, Mitchell Robinson is the one we were talking about tonight in just 19 minutes. I'd love to see these four blocks and one steal. That's almost enough for him to be owned. Did have seven rebounds, so not a great line, but the blocks, if you need them, he will get them and rebounds as well if he can get a few more minutes. 
And then one guy who I guess I can say I don't trust anymore only because he is not getting a run. Uh, Noah Vonley, 17 minutes tonight off the bench. Just four points, four rebounds. He was someone I thought I could trust. Based on comments from the Knicks, based on the talent I think he has, I thought he was safe. And this is why some of these teams you just don't trust, and the Knicks fall in that category. So I am not even looking at this roster down the stretch. Um, what do you think of the Knicks? What do you? What are your? What's your trust level on any of these guys? Oh, man, I am so tired of chasing the Knicks. Neil, they they exhaust me, man. And here I go again. The one guy that's piquing my interest is actually Cornette, who moved in the starting lineup. Didn't really have it going tonight, but I'm encouraged by the 31 minutes and the fact that he took 16 shots. Now, if that shot was falling, this would have been a much better night for him. Only made three of those 16 shots, but... I'm going to move him to my watch list in all my deep leagues. And if he's going to continue to start and take this many shots, I think he could be worth a pickup. But uh, I'm just going to keep an eye on that situation. And here I go again, Neil, just chasing Knicks. I'm going to like pick up Cornette and then next week they're going to move Cornette to the bench and Vonley is going to start. Or, you know, it just I feel like all season long I've been chasing guys like Robinson and Trier and um Dotson and uh it's just Moutier and uh, Hazonia I owned at one time it's like it's ridiculous uh how many Knicks I've owned this season and end up dropping it's just it's crazy I'm tired of it Neil (laughs) Ah. all right (laughs) sorry sorry for that rant um the Atlanta Hawks let's let's look in on them Trey Young, 16 points, 11 assists, 6 rebounds, 2 steals, 6 and 19 from the field, 1-3, 3 3 of 4 from the line. It's a pretty good game from him. Turian Prince with only 10 points, 5 rebounds, 2 threes on 3 of 12 shooting, 2 of 2 from the line. Deadman, man. Um, 21 big points from him, but not too much else. I do like he got 1 steal, 1 block, but only 2 rebounds. Um... Did shoot six of ten from the field, and actually pretty nice that he gave you four threes tonight. That's outstanding. Perfect five of five from the line. You know, I think Deadman is a big winner from the trade deadline. I thought he would get moved to a contending team as maybe a backup center. So the fact that he stayed on the Hawks is starting, getting 26 minutes like he did tonight, that feels like a victory if you have uh, Dwayne Deadman. John Collins didn't really have it going tonight. Only eight points, one steal, one rebound um, for four of 11 shooting. But I'm not worried about John Collins. I'm expecting a big uh, stretch run for him after the All-Star break. And Neil, Kevin Herter, man, I had him in my lineup tonight in like a lot of leagues. A goose egg, zero points in 23 minutes. And, you know, I feel like even a couple of his previous games have been um, just really low end. I feel like he's kind of, even though he's starting, I feel like he's taking a hit with the return of Prince. Baysmore tonight got 27 minutes off the bench. I think maybe that hurt him as well. So I'm kind of, I'm getting a tinge of worry for Herder. In fact, I might move him to the bench in some of my Roto leagues to see if he can get going again. I'm, I would not drop him. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying I'm start, I'm starting to worry on him. And uh, where I can, I may move him to my bench. I just said Baysmore, he had a great game. You know, this is great to see, Neil. We keep talking about how Baysmore is getting minutes in like the the mid to low teens. So very encouraged to see him get 27 minutes tonight. Put up a nice line, 16 points, six rebounds, one assist on seven of 14 shooting. That's pretty good. Um, There's nobody else really that I trust here off of the bench. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Atlanta Hawks? Yeah, this is a tough team too. That is going to be tough to trust down the stretch if they kind of mess with their lineup to tank or not. I don't think they are, but um, I trust Collins. Yeah, Prince, like you said, I don't know. Deadman, I think is going to be okay. Um, Trey Young, of course, seems to be fine except for those turnovers and field goal percent, of course. Uh, Herder, someone who I am still a believer in despite tonight. I think all these stars got yanked because they just weren't playing that well. Um, 
I don't know though. I've got to see what they're what what if they if they go more with a a nine ten man rotation with mixed minutes down the stretch. If they go heavy with their starters, um, curious to see how that plays out. So I am a kind of watching this team pretty closely. I don't own any Hawks, but uh, I'm curious to see what their um, uh, mindset is in the last sort of 25, 30 games of the season. Hey, you know what? Really yep. quick. Sorry to interrupt you. I'm kind of ragging on Herter just a little bit here. I should probably note, I believe he was dealing with a left ankle sprain in this one. Could be why he only saw 23 minutes. I'm not sure, but I just want to note that, that, um, you know, this could be why he kind of had a bad line here. So let's hope he just uh, gets rest, comes back after the all-star break, ready to go. Yeah, I hope so. I've got him on. I've got him in the league. I'm counting on him. Uh, all right, Oklahoma City, New Orleans. Uh, OKC goes down to New Orleans and loses 122 to 131. Westbrook continues his triple double streak, 44 points on 18 of 30 shooting. Adrian, I'm gonna borrow a phrase from you. Great googly moogly. Uh, 14 <laughs> rebounds, 11 assists. Damn. Uh, yeah, four three pointers, a steal, two blocks. Paul George, another solid night, 28 points, seven rebounds, six assists, less efficient, 11 to 29 from the field. Three of 17 from three point line. This guy has the green light, and tonight it was not falling. Uh, very um, kind of a poor night from Adams from fantasy perspective. 36 minutes, just four points, five rebounds, two steals, and a block. Patrick Patterson, as you mentioned, got the start. 15 minutes, did not too much. Ferguson, 36 minutes. God, this guy cannot get anything fantasy-wise. Uh, Raymond Felton even played 23 minutes off the bench. Uh, the best interesting line is this Noel. 22 minutes off the bench, 22 points, 13 rebounds. He will do this from time to time. I don't think you can really predict it, though. Uh, Mention Grant was injured tonight or was out tonight. I imagine he'll be back in the starting lineup come Post All Star break, nothing too serious. Uh, Adrian Westbrook, this is a this is just a phenomenal line. Uh, oh, I should mention he also made all his free throws, which is nice to see. He's been struggling a bit there this season. I don't know what to take away from this except Patterson. Obviously, we don't trust um, Ferguson. Continues to be that way. We'll see how the Morris situation affects Grant. I guess after the All Star break. Man, uh, Westbrook and George, Paul George combined, took 29 threes tonight. I think they thought that they were Steph Curry and Klay Thompson tonight, man. They were really firing away from deep. That was crazy. But, um, man, I okay, so my biggest takeaway, I'm really uh, – starting to shy away from the front court even i think steven adams will be okay but i think he could see a small ding with the with the addition of uh keith markeef morris and then uh i think grant's gonna take a hit noel who looked good him as well um, not that we're really counting on nerland's noel but I'm just really seeing a big hit for this front court fantasy wise. I think it's really going to get spread out now amongst uh, these four guys here. So that's, that's what I got on the thunder. Let's jump over to the Pelicans. Neil, we talked about it briefly. Anthony Davis, man, it looked like he kind of tweaked his arm or shoulder uh, going for a block and uh, we didn't see him come back in this game. I saw some footage of him leaving, and it looked like he has had his arm uh, down by his side as he was leaving the locker room. And, uh, Neil, this team may just be looking for any excuse to shut him down for a period of time. I'm worried. I think it'll be a very good sign if we see him play in the All-Star game. If he sits at the All-Star game, I will go into panic mode. On Anthony Davis I mean if he doesn't play in the all-star game I think he could miss a week two weeks something like that so um you know I almost dropped Okafor I ended up not dropping him because somebody outbid me on the guy that I was going to pick up when I was going to drop Okafor if you have Okafor hang on to him let's wait and see what's going to happen to Anthony Davis if Okafor is available on the wire if you can, maybe pick him up if it suits you. Because if Anthony Davis is going to miss time, we've seen Okafor play really well in his absence. 
Holiday tonight, outstanding game. 32 points, three, five defensive stats from Holiday tonight. That's outstanding. Three blocks, two steals, seven assists, five rebounds, three threes, 12 of 27 from the field, five of five from the line. He's locked in. He's just uh, as solid as it comes, so you don't worry about him at all. Neil, Julius Randle, hello, 33 points, one steal, one block, six assists with 11 rebounds, two threes, 11 of 21 from the field, nine of 12 from the line. Uh, the, I think the Lakers made a gigantic mistake by letting this guy walk, man. I think he's an outstanding NBA player. Miller with eight points, five assists, four rebounds, one steal, and two threes on three of seven shooting. Williams getting the start, playing 34 minutes with nine points, four assists, 12 rebounds, one three, uh, four of seven shooting from the field. Anthony Davis, we talked about it, only 16 minutes due to him leaving due to that arm shoulder injury. 14 points, one steal, one block, two assists, four rebounds, one three, five of 10 from the field, three or four from the line. Buckle in if you have Anthony Davis, man, because it is going to be a roller coaster for the rest of the season. Uh, I talked about Okafor, 12 points coming off the bench with eight rebounds, two assists. Uh, I was ready to move on from Okafor, but I am going to stick with him now and um, see what happens here. Um, not too much else to talk about. Neil, what are your thoughts on the Pelicans? What do you think of this Anthony Davis? situation oh man it the, the drama just continues right um i don't know how seriously he was hurt tonight i know he didn't play the second half um and uh this could be a harbinger of things to come i agree with you that okafor certainly can be a speculative ad in case davis um sees extended uh quote unquote injury time issues i i don't know what's going to happen with him it's very bizarre still i will um Say that if Okafor does get a starting lineup, um, yes, he will be just fine and worth owning. Yeah, it's interesting. The, the, the Lakers gave up two uh, first-round picks from a while ago, Randall and D'Angelo Russell, who have fantasy-wise have been very solid since leaving those teams. Um, curious how the career, careers end up playing out. Uh, but getting back to the Pelicans, um, let's see. Kenrich Williams, 34 minutes. I think he might be worth at least a watch list ad, if not an ad. Um, Darius Miller, someone I thought might be worth adding. I don't believe so anymore. It's not consistent enough. Um, so the one takeaway from tonight is Kenrich Williams is someone I'm closely watching. Um, and, uh, perhaps, uh, we'll pick him up. If he's out there. Certainly I think in 14 team leagues, he can be picked up already. If he hasn't been, uh, it's still the case in your league. If he's still available and, um, that's really it. I, I'm just tired of the drama. I want Davis to either play or, or I want him rolled out. The uncertainty is killing me. Yeah, I think, man, this all-star uh, this all-star game is going to be key. If you have Anthony Davis, you are you've got your fingers crossed that Anthony Davis is gonna play in the all-star game. Because I think if he's good enough to play in the all-star game, he'll be good enough to return after the all-star break. But man, if he misses this game, it really tells you that he could be dealing with something. And that's just all the excuse that the Pelicans need to give him an extended break. We know that they really don't want to play him. They're kind of, the NBA is kind of forcing their hand. Uh, the rumor is, right, they'd get fined $100,000 per game if, if they sat a healthy Anthony Davis. Now they could say, hey, he's hurt. We can't play him. So um, the all-star game is going to be key, man. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happened. Drama, Neil, <laughs> drama. Ah. Yeah. All right, man. Um, and what what else? Anything else you think? Uh... No, I don't really see anything right now. I'm going to take, like I said uh, yesterday, this will be my week to kind of reevaluate my two teams that are going to potentially have head-to-head -head playoffs and figure out if I want to sort of rebalance them in a way that uh, I can dominate or try to dominate you know, seven categories and okay to punt one or something like that um, instead of trying to balance it. That's what I'm going to do over the last, um, over the next week to try to figure out that with my team and also the guest pickups down the stretch. So, but as of now, got nothing else to add. Hey, I love that, Neil. Great advice. All you listeners uh, with this time off, take a look at your team. 
Check out what your team, what your needs are, man. To look at your schedule for your fantasy playoffs. If you're in head-to-head -head leagues, if you're in roto leagues, take a look and see where you can gain points. Because as soon as we come back from the All Star break, you know one of the biggest misconceptions is that the All Star break is like the halfway point. No, man, we're in like as soon as we get back from the All Star break, I believe we have like six weeks left. So, and in fact, in head-to-head -head leagues, it's less than six weeks. So. Um, take this time, evalu evaluate your team, see what you need, see where you're at. And as soon as we get back from this break, let's go hard, man. And uh, that's where we're at, you guys. So, man, I can't believe we're already at the All-Star break, Neil. Like, part of me is like, yeah, you know, we go every night. Sometimes it feels <laughs> like a grind. And then the other part of me is like, man, we're at the All-Star break. We're almost there, Neil. I know. It's it's both... Um seems like forever and a blink of an eye at the same time it's nuts all right anything else before you can actually you stuck around for all games i'm proud of you yes. right? <laughs> you, yes. made, you made it for I, the entire you know slate what? i feel like i have accomplished something <laughs> sticking around and it was just three games i'm like all proud of myself and it was only three games man hey hey you guys thank you so much for listening and supporting the show we appreciate it we love uh we love uh, doing this for you guys. It's been a great season. We, I can't wait to uh, come back after the All-Star break. So uh, thank you guys so much. Hit us up on Twitter. He's at Ball with Neil. I'm at Adrian Benjamins. Hit us up, and we will see you guys after the break.